Okay, we're going to be creating this awesome texture here for lights. Uh, I see this as something which is normally added in Photoshop, but there's no reason not to put this in Max. It's relatively easy to do, so we'll cover that and we'll get that going. What you need to do is just open your material editor first. You click up here. I like slate material editor, but if you keep the left mouse button pressed, you can also go to your your old school, old schooly uh, compact material editor. Again, just hold that down. Go to slate. Okay, I'm going to pick the material here. And basically this is in a group, so group, open the group, select this bulb. I'm going to press Alt-Q to isolate it so you can see the bulb. Now, this is the material I've put on there. So what I've done is I came along and I grab a light material and I start with assigning this. And if I come out of isolation mode, I'll take this light, this is slightly in the wrong place here. Is that just down here really? I kind of want it about there. Just un I want this just under this housing here. So what I do is I make sure I've got this ball selected. Go back to all here. Press M. And I've got this V-Ray light and I've assigned that to it. And then what you do is just go into your render settings. And you can just do a region render. I've got this here. So you can just do a region render. And see how this comes out. And we're getting here exactly what we expect, which is just the white. So that's obviously not going to cut it. What you need to do is, in your material editor, you need to fall off. So just go Maps, General, Fall Off, double click that and put that into light color. And then what we're going to do is make this front one, just make that white. It doesn't have to be completely white actually, make it a bit yellow, a bit warm, just slightly. And then this one here, we're going to make darker, much darker. Something like this. And then really what you want to do is you want to take this, sorry, take the fall off. And this is perpendicular parallel, that's fine. You can also do towards away. And now we're going to render it. Now the problem is, is it's too bright. So again, all we're going to get here is white. Okay, what you need to do here to get rid of that white, because you have the fall off and you have the colors, so it shouldn't be white. So what you have to do is just lower the color amount here, lower this parameter, until you start seeing that fall off that you've put in there. So I'm going to bring it down to 0.1. And of course, this depends on your camera settings. And now we just begin to see the edge here. So it's still too bright, but we are starting to see something. So if we try 0, 0.5, I'm just pressing F9 here to render just to get it done quickly. Okay, so now we're getting that. So let's try this. Let's try on the fall off. At least we're seeing color now, so we know we're heading in the right direction. Let's just push this up, push this down. Let's go all the way. And let's just see how much more we can see. So we're seeing this now with the white in the middle and just a, a basic color on the edge. So once you have that, you probably want that to be stronger, that fall off. So you're going to use this mixed curve. So in the fall off parameters here, just come along here and click on add point, put it in here, right click. I just right click here to so it changes from add point over to move. So right click. Right click on the point and make it Bezier smooth. Just drag the handle so it's something like this. And we're just going to go both ways and see what this does. You know, are we getting more white or are we getting more color? Getting more white there. Which means if we come this way, we should be getting more color. And that's what we're seeing. We get that color coming in there. Now, I kind of like the fall off, but I think this color here is too, you know, it's it's too hard, it's too too orange. So let's just bring that saturation down. Let's try that again. 
And that's it. That's how you handle this, right? So my amounts here in the V-Ray light material, those are not necessarily going to be correct for your render scene. They just work in this render scene. So you've got to adjust it until you get that color coming through. Now, the next thing I was asked is the guys go, okay, that's great, but we don't see any reflections. So how do you add reflections back into this? So the way you add reflections back into it is just take your V-Ray light material here. I'm going to right click and go over, uh, change material map type. Map type. Go materials, V-Ray, and use a V-Ray blend material. Keep old material as submaterial. So now we have this blend being created. And what we're going to do is just get another V-Ray material. And we're just going to take this and plug this straight into coat one. And then we're going to make a basic chrome. So diffuse, black, reflection, all the way up. Turn off for now. And you can see if you do this, you've got basic chrome. And then what happens is, with this coat, click on Additive Shellac Mode. You, whenever you do this, you always get this error message from V-Ray where it says, basically, it's no longer physically accurate. It's no longer completely photorealistic. So we take this, we know we've got that on Shellac, and then we render. And you get all your reflections coming back into the scene. And that's really the simplicity of it. So two other points here which are very important to know is, first of all, how to make this actually shine, you know? Um, and what we're going to do is just take this and just go into isolation mode. Press T for top, Z for zoom. Okay, so you go in top view, press F4 if you want to see the geometry. And then what you're going to do is you need to come here on the creation and you need to go to lights, V-Ray, V-Ray light. And just put a plane here. And then you're going to change this plane to sphere. And then I normally go F for front, and zoom in, press W, and just take this up. And you just need this to be around the light, but a little bit. You know, you need to be around it. The problem is, is if you have it intersecting with this geometry here, then when you render, you're going to get an odd light shape here. So you need to take this light. And ideally lower that down so it it's just like that it just goes inside the housing here and that's sort of the ideal location for that light to be and then what you have to do is you have to take this light go to the properties and just go on option make it invisible and turn off effect reflections and that way you'll get the light from it but you won't you won't see it in the viewport when it has a light the reason i do this is because i try and get, whenever I use a V-Ray light material, I try to get it to the right color, but I don't really want it lighting the scene. I mean, it's going to light it a little bit, but I don't want it having a massive effect. If I bring up V-Ray light lister here, and I turn off all the lights, just so you can see. And now if I click render, so you can see there's a tiny amount of light coming off these lights. But it's barely noticeable, and that's really what I try and do with all of my, whenever I have a V-Ray light material. I don't want people really observing it and noticing it clearly. And then you take this light here, the one here around, and you turn that one on, and that one lights up around these lights. So now it will look correct and look like these lights are on. And that's how I use those two lights. One is just for the material, and one is for actually lighting the scene. And that gives you a beautiful render. You get beautiful reflections, and it just looks fantastic. And that's a simple way of doing it, and it gets you out of a bind, and it looks great.